Hollinger's had two thirds eye. Hollinger's had two thirds. Hollinger's had one third. Hollinger's had one third eye. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. The destroyer is among the most feared class of vessels on the open ocean. These fast, maneuverable, and heavily armored warships were first conceived in the U.S. in 1902 through the USS Bainbridge, decades after the invention of the self-propelled torpedo. They were originally known as torpedo boat destroyers. But by World War I, the term destroyer became a catch-all name for the boats. Destroyers are primarily intended to act as escorts for larger vessels inside of a battle group or convoy. With their ability to move quickly and attack a wide range of target types, they are the perfect line of defense for aircraft carriers. Amphibious assault ships and supply vessels one of the most recent destroyer types introduced to the United States Navy is the Arleigh Burke class. These vessels measure more than 500 feet long and can travel at speeds of up to 30 knots. They are exceptionally well armed and well armored. boasting a range of weapons and more than 300 enlisted crew members per vessel. One of the most formidable weapons aboard the average Arleigh Burke class vessel is the Mark 45 54 caliber lightweight deck mounted cannon. The versatile gun is suitable for use against surface warships, land-based targets, and enemy aircraft. boasting a capacity of more than 20 rounds. It can be fired under fully automatic control or manually. Either way, it takes a six-person crew below deck to keep the cannon fully stocked with ammunition during long periods of fire. For close-up engagements, Arleigh Burke class destroyers also have a Phalanx CIWS system another fully automated weapon. This high-speed autocannon is capable of targeting enemy fast boats and other high-speed vehicles that might attempt to engage the destroyer at close range. Most vessels also include a wide array of missiles, torpedoes, and other weapons, which can be augmented depending on the current missions. In short, these are not the sort of opponents one engages lightly. Regular maintenance is a huge part of life at sea and the 300 crew members assigned to our Liebert class destroyers, like the USS O'Kane seen here, work daily to ensure their vessel is in the very best working order. Deck areas and fastenings are treated frequently with corrosion-resistant paint to prevent damage from the salt water and air. below the deck, welders work to fix or replace metal components for all sorts of ship parts.
This daily maintenance helps demonstrate just how self-reliant these vessels can be, despite the months at a time they often spend at sea. However, there are times when even the most well-maintained ship will need to spend some time in dry dock. Dry docks are special sea level channels that can be flooded and drained of water as needed. They simply allow even the largest vessels to enter the channel directly from the water. Once in position, over the supports, the water is pumped out, revealing the entire hull of the ship. This gives dock maintenance crews access to parts of the ship that would normally be underwater. Considering the amount of armor present on the average destroyer, it would be unacceptable to lose a nearly $2 billion ship to saltwater corrosion or rust. Once the repairs have been made, the dry dock channel will be reflooded with seawater. Once the gate is open, the newly repaired destroyer can make its way back into the open ocean. While U.S. Navy destroyers are often tasked with some daring missions, they spend much of their time moving throughout the world's temperate seas. In the case of the U.S. Coast Guard, it's not uncommon for a mission to take them well within the Arctic or Antarctic Circle. Such situations call for a special type of boat that can not only handle operating in extremely cold conditions, but also break its way through thick sections of ice without sustaining damage. The answer is the Polar Class USCG icebreaker vessels. First introduced in the 1970s, these highly specialized cutters can measure more than 400 feet long and stand well over 100 feet from the waterline. The largest and most technologically advanced vessel in the U.S. Coast Guard's fleet, the USC GC Healy, is actually the first icebreaker from the U.S. to reach the North Pole. Despite their rough-and-tumble job, icebreakers like the Healy are packed with advanced technology. The Arctic and Antarctic are two of the least explored and understood parts of the world. So much of what these vessels do is focused on scientific discovery and innovation. In Healy's case, 51 of the 136-person crew is made up of scientists. The vessel also boasts five laboratories in total, including a chemical lab, wet lab, and meteorological lab. Icebreakers also have heavily reinforced holes and specially shaped bows that help break through surface ice. They also have mechanisms that shift the ship's ballast from stern to bow to give them additional weight when ice breaking. The large crane in the back is suitable for several purposes, including towing seismic equipment. The vessel also features a helicopter pad from which it can deploy an aircraft to provide additional reconnaissance or to spot potential problems in the path of the icebreaker.
As part of the United States Coast Guard, the Healy and other icebreakers are sometimes called upon to perform rescue operations. In July 2014, a 36-foot sailboat became trapped in the Arctic ice about 40 miles north of Barrow, Alaska, the northernmost town in the United States. The man had been attempting to sail his boat from Vancouver to eastern Canada through the Northwest Passage. Unfortunately, he only made it about a third of the way before becoming trapped. Between its heavy-duty crane and the size of its hull, the icebreaker was able to safely tow the vessel back to shore while clearing a path through the ice to protect it along the way. Accessing the Arctic has always proven extremely difficult and dangerous for humans. Explorers spent most of the 19th and 20th centuries attempting to access the North or South Pole merely for the sake of saying that they had done so. Today, we can fly there with minimal effort, thanks to modern technology. Heavy-duty cargo aircraft like the C-17 can operate from a wide range of remote bases, including some less than ideal landing strips. These planes routinely land and take off from Phoenix Airfield in Antarctica, which features a runway of heavily compacted snow and ice. The Army Corps of Engineers designed the runway with heavy rollers, weighing up to 160,000 pounds. To make matters worse, even well-equipped airfields like Phoenix could do little in the case of an accident. That's where the LC-130 comes in. This is a ski-equipped variant of the C-130 Hercules, another large military cargo aircraft specifically modified for use in icy and snowy environments. Here, you can see an LC-130 coming in for a landing at Joint Base Elmendorf-Richardson in Anchorage, Alaska. It's important that the landing gear be suitable for both standard concrete and snow, which is why the ski fits atop the wheels rather than completely replacing them. Currently, all LC-130s are operated by the New York Air National Guard, but they have served as experimental planes in the past. This makes it possible to see other hybrid landing gear aircraft in the future. Over the years, three C-130s have performed exercises, drills, and missions in places like Greenland and New Zealand. Though C-130s have been in service for nearly 70 years, it's possible more and more models will be converted into LC models, allowing them to enjoy a second life of service. From the open ocean to the frozen seas and lands of the North, the United States military and Coast Guard repeatedly prove that they can operate in any environment. Be it a mission of peace, science, or rescue, nothing can stop these ships and planes as they complete their missions for their country. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.